Hello, hello, guys. What is going on? Happy day to you. Boy, that big old notch taken out of my ear. I think I've been ruined for life. Damn it. I'm going to get a prosthesis put on it. Hey, listen, now, um, we're moving on to something else other than uh, that first business that we we're talking about here with the story of Luke. I'm in the, I've, I've not made it very much further than those first three chapters. Although I've listened to it several times, I just sat back and kind of meditated to hear the story a bunch of times. I wish it would look up like this. And, um, anyways, uh, you can see I've got a little further on my painting. I'll just show you real fast. This is, I'm working, it's going to be a night painting of that place that I do a lot of work for every now and then for La Tita. And of course, behind me is today's lessons. All right. But I want to get to you first. On number three, or in the uh, chapter three of of this of this gospel is going to be talking about this connection this of uh, connection with the Holy Spirit. This is uh, again I tell you this is where the uh, where we lose Luis. I mean, hey, called the dog called her my dog's name. Um, this is where. Uh, the two split up. This is where we uh, meet Jesus. Jesus comes aboard, and we also get the business of uh, of him being baptized. All right. But the way I want you to understand this is is you know basically this is how you have to go about understanding it. Otherwise, it's just a lot of noise. Really, believe it or not, we have from the first parts of the scriptures it goes it's like from one from one till like 24 and then from that point on it's all these names okay this is the lineage of Jesus okay now what I like to have a little bit of fun with is I, I did this breakdown with one other one I think I did it with Matthew but I haven't gone back and checked on it but uh, I was pretty thorough back then I'm pretty thorough now you know but uh, I know a little bit more about what to look for with the code uh, in these days. Okay. So from like the first verse to 24 is, uh, you know, telling us of a story of something. We're going to go through it. All right. I'm just setting you up. All right. But the way this runs is just like the world's one, two, three, four. Each one of those particular one through four, four, uh, five through eight. You got them up here. I got them. Can you see it? This is them. They're all represented here with two left over at the very end. All right. This is nine. There are nine world changes. All right. Nine. So how's the code work from one through nine? So one is going to be representing God. Those first four, it's going to be representing the first part. It's going to be like, uh, what's going on here? You know, that's the, the initiation. What's going on? That's what a one is. A two is going to be about God's creation, both his male and female, something about there should be something in there about God's creation, this duality between the male side and the female side, or the physical and the spiritual. All right, and then we're going to get to the third one. Third one, yeah, from 9 to 12. The third one's going to be representing the connection, the boink, you know, what's going on. What This is what happened. This is So if you're reading this, 4 is going to be representing the world. 5 is going to be representing our skin. Then number 6 is going to be representing the way. The uh, interior parts of our body. Number seven is going to be about the cooking, the, the brightness, the God. This is seven when we meet that seven chakra, the, you know, a bit in the crown, you know. 
Then we got number eight. Eight is the control. It's mine. This is it. It's mine. You know, this ain't going to change no more. And then we get the last one is nine is the consciousness. It says this is the good side. This is the positive side of the world. All right. And then we go on to the 37 and uh, 37 and 38. Now, those are just representing where this world, where Jesus comes from, who Jesus really is. And it's made in number form. So you would see that the when 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 something winds up on five, they're representing our bodies, representing whoever the individual is that's reading the story. That's how this works. All right. So, anyways, those are every four is going to represent the West, which is going to be starting from a mind. It's our mind, the captain, bosses, rulers, kings, even God fits in here. You know, this uh, what's going on. The north is our emotional side. This is where the female is. This is the uh, there's a female uh, part to this because it's our emotional side. Uh, it's also about water, and if you hear things with moon in it and stuff like that, or silver, you know, this is this would be representing this part here. Heart, moon, it's water. It's prophecy. So if someone has a prophecy, it's coming from you know from God. It's a uh, emotional thing. It's the wilderness. This where you're going searching. It's in the wilderness. This is their emotion. And then south over here is going to be our physical side, body. It's the sacrament. You know, it's the country. It's the it's the nations. It's brethren. It's the congregation. It's the multitudes. This is when they bring us all together. That's the body. You know. And then the east is going to be our spiritual side. And it'll have God, Yahweh, and Lord, and stuff like that in there, or high places, or something. So those are the things that you're supposed to look for when you're reading this, and it'll help understand what the hell was we just reading. And when it comes down to all of those names now, this is where this is that compromises more than half of today's story, of today's record. All of those names mean something. And I wrote them all down. And I'm not going to go through the. <laughs> I don't want to go through them all, but we're going to go through it some way because they're they're a bunch of crazy names, and I can't, and I'm not really good at that kind of reading. All right, but anyhow, I'm going to monitor you down. We're going to check it out. All right, from the beginning. I don't care how long this takes. Now, in the fifteenth year. Of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, la 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 la. Number two, Annas and Cephas being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. Oh, oh, all right, we're winding up, we're getting in there. So just you just follow that because I'm not going to keep doing that. All right, follow me out. Number three, it's about the body. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And it's written in the book of the words of, I, of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. All right, new Lord, new world. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then saith he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized from him, O oh, you generation of vipers, who, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Eight, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within them yourself, We have Abraham for our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. That was the second one. So see how God spoke to people at the end, or this would have been like some kind of Isaiah or Isaiah or someone, whatever. Elijah. Starting again. 
and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruits is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. That's representing our north. This one is going to come with some explanation. 12. Then came also publicans to be baptized. And they said unto him, Master, what shall we do? It? And he said unto them, Exact no more than which is appointed to you. Boom. Now we're over here. Wait, are we on 14, 15, 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, 13, 13. And he said unto them, Exact no more than what is appointed you. That's one. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, What shall we do? So this is the question. This is where your, your middle part comes in your mind. And, and he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse falsely or content with your be content with your wages and number 15 as the people were ex, were in expectation and the men mused in their heart of John whether he were Christ or not this would be the south John answered unto them saying indeed I baptize you with water but the one mightier than I will come as them whose latches who the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Fire, with the Holy Ghost, and with fire. That will be another world ending on number 16. All right, well, I want to back it up real quick. All right. This idea of, of this falls on number two. This falls about the north. And this is this idea. What are we going to do? What can we do? This is after the axe is laid to the root of a tree. And he says, this is what I want you to do. He says, for, do the, for he that hath two coats, let him impart, uh, let him impart, split, to him that hath none. So this is the idea of getting out of your skin, shredding the garment, you know, or, uh, you know, that idea of, you know, phew, baptism is the whole idea. You know, hey, shit, if you got two coats, get rid of one of them. Come down to someone that got none, you know. And that's this whole part about three is coming over to this other side. You have to be in this uh, child form, you know. And he says, uh, let's see where we at now, number 17. Come on, 17. 17 is going to be a new one. Whose fan is his right hand? And, and who who is, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner and the chaff will be burned with the fire, unquenchable. All right. Now listen, this is, this is, Number one, number two, and many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. But Herod, the Tecriar, being reproved by him for Herod, his brother Philip's wife, and for the evils which Herod had done, and he added this above all, that he shut up John in prison. And then all the people were, that were baptized, and it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Number 21. Number 21 represents a three. 21 is also a brand new world starting to come in here. Now, when the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying that the heaven was opened. 
and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and thee I am well pleased. That was number 22. 23, which represents five, the body, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Are we getting 23? 24, let's do the last one. Which was the son of Matty, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, and the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph. So that ends up on number 24, which represents six. All right. So what you're going to get out of this, you guys, is this is the idea that uh, this Joseph is the guy who Yahweh who Yahweh adds. And this number six represents a gift, attachment, uh, the, all those, there's five names, five names each time we go down the road here. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you back up because I'm not going to read off this. This will look for you. All right. So from this point on, there are nothing but worlds and they're going to match what one means. So uh, what, what the numbers, how the number system goes. All right. So we just, we're going to go past number 24. We're going to 25, 26, 27, and 28. So this should be something about God, the gift of God, strong, carried, uh, the brave. It's about us. It's going to be about our intellect. It's our, our lower mind. All right. Um, strong. It's the comforter. Um, shining, we get down to, this is number 25, 5, 6, 7, so it'd be 7, 7, 8, 9, and 10, all right, 7, 8, 9, and another 1, all right, that's how you're going to have to do it, because one's going to be, rep even within the numbers, they're going to say, they're going to be telling what the number is, which would be like, hey, this is a, how you're going to understand this, all right, So number 25 represents seven. Seven is that final day, Lord's day. That's what seven actually means. All right. So it's going to be, it's the gift of the Lord. It's strong. Uh, it's the comforter. It's what he who separates. And this is the shining brightness of Yahweh. This is number seven. All right, then we're going to keep going. Remember, these first four are going to represent one. But they within themselves are going to represent the, the numbers on their own. All right, so we have wiping away. This is number eight, which is about control. It's cleaning out. All right. Uh, this is when um, this is when the floor is cleared. This is when he goes and takes care of the money changers and stuff like that. But this is the idea: it's cleaning the house. This is cleaning the house. Uh, gift of the Lord again comes in. We have uh, one who uh, gives up the strange wife. That's some guy named Simeni. Simi S E M E I. One. Uh, who who, who uh, give us the strange wife, gives up the strange wife, all right? Uh, da -dum -dum, we get uh, my Jehovah adds, praise be the one. Okay, so it's going to go a little slow, but here we go. Number nine in this, which represents 27. We have Jonah, such and such and such, and Neri. This is God is gracious, will course, seed of Babylon. We have uh, Lent of God, asked or given of God. My uh, right, bright, Yahweh's brightness. So we're here we are talking about 
the first world on here is representing the number one, and it goes just crazy with the word white, bright, the uh, brightness, top, uh, the gift, uh, strong, the comforter, um, the person who gives up the strange woman, you know, so this is all positive thing, all right, representing number one. Then we got a, a second batch of worlds between 29 and 32. So, you know, if you're following along in the Bible, it'll help me if I not having to say these damn names, all right? But I put them all down in order. It's two. So here we are. Number 29 represents 11, all right, which represents two. All right, so here we are. It's going to be representing two, and it's the second. It's the second world. All right, second world. All right, so here we go. Or the second set. I mean, it's a fresh set, but it's supposed to represent number two. All right. So we get raised. Uh, who pardons? This is your help. Yahweh is exalted. This is the gift, it's attachment, it's a pledge, 29, 30, we get Simon to Ikram, we get uh, obedient, listening, praised, the praised one, Jehovah adds, uh, Yahweh is gracious and resurrection of God, that's number 30. We know that that's three, that's that idea when we're connected. Number three is what we're talking about here, the chapter three. It's just, that's why this is such a really good read. That's why it's representing nine, because it's a beautiful thing. This is all on the perfect, on the good side of things, all right? God is, is present. So uh, number 31 is a four. We get supplying and supplied. We get numbered. Uh, rewarded, it's the gift of the Lord we will give, or he will give, and beloved friend. And number 32, representing five, Jesse, Obed, Booz, Salmon, and Nassan is wealthy, a servant, a workman, uh, in strength, a garment, helper, and the entryway. So here is number 32 representing five, our body, and we're being known as the helper, the entryway, the goat. This is a garment. This is really cool, you guys. All right. Now we go to the next set is going to represent uh, the uh, three, which would be, you know, some kind of joining together with the light. Okay. That's what number three represents, the combination of one and two. So what do we get out of this? Abimadad to Judah. That's the first one, the first set of four, or first set of five. We get my people are liberal, high, elevated, dart of joy, division of a song, breach, or to burst forth and praise. Farce is a really cool one. That's that farce, P-H-A-R-E-S, to breach or to burst forth. The six is representing our uh, chakra system. Okay, the works. And so uh, number 34, which represents seven. All right. To follow behind. He who laughs. This has got a Isaac in it. Uh, so you can see that this number two, Isaac, is going to be our, you know, Isaac means laughter. So that's going to be our second one to keep you caught up. Abraham, the father of many, uh, wealth, and uh, he, uh, horse, uh, horse, horse, dry and hot. This is what seven horse is horse. We can't see. You're not supposed to be able to talk. All right. Uh, I would think that's part of it, but it's also dry and hot. This is about wealth. Uh, seven. This is where you get this this idea. Of this is where Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are all in this group here. Odin who laughs. This is seven. This is where your 
this is where, you know, the beautiful things happen in our lives. And it's going to be representing number 34. We're going to go further. Number 35 is going to be about our bodies. should be uh, the branch, um, a layer turning. Uh, we are friend, shepherd, uh, division. Division is that fail, phallic. Uh, we're associates and friendships. There's, it's the room or the hall, the banquet. Okay, this is representing number 35. Number 35 is representing our physical side, and it's also representing number 8, the idea that this is a control number. All right? It's the branch. Let's go up here to the end of this one, which is number 36. 36 is Canaan. Uh, Canaan, after something, another, all the way to Lamish, right? You're doing this right. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting to the, um, the final four. We're getting to the final four, which is or the final of the four is number 36. Six, seven, eight, makes it a nine. So this is for Canaan. Add to this Lamesh number, name, or whatever. And this is a possessor, purchaser, a healer, a reliever, name, renown, rest, comfort, to make low. This is number nine. All right. Now, this is going to be representing this place here because it's God. When we get this intervention, there's no longer a high place and a low place. There, the low is brought high and the high is brought low. This is that idea of balance, and balance represents what the word really means to be in Israel. Israel. All right. The is the spiritual side of you, this female sign. The raw side, the mind, the matter. And together, when they come together, we then create L, which is the power of God. All right? And so um, we're going to end this note by, uh, we have number 37 and 38. Now, Methuselah is an interesting name. Methuselah just means man with a mission. All right? It also, because there's so many words in there, it also has to do with the javelin has to be with the, someone that's like shooting a sphere or some kind something where he's, he's you know he's looking for a target and he's good at this and of course we always know in these stories that it's the archer these guys that are taking the bow it's the idea of bow and the bow would wind up being the uh the the, the rainbow but it's a bow but it's this idea that you're aiming high it's what they're doing when they're working with this all right so methuselah is a man with the man of the javelin, uh, man on the mission, all right, and the, of the dart, you know, something, something piercing, all right. We got Enoch. Enoch means dedicated. Jared means rose. So they're talking about descending, all right. Uh, that's what that's what that means. But rose, rose are ha, they're always talking about the chakra when we're dealing with this. Okay, uh, we also get uh, praise of God. And, and by the way, that Jared rose, it's on the third line. This is you know when you're going stop and smell the roses along the way. I have a funny little word there, a song memory. Uh, we get this Mikhail, means something or another, means praise of God and possessor and purchaser of Canaan. And down on the last bits of this, representing number 38, 38, 8, 9, 10, 11, is another, it represents two. It's going to talk about you, God's creation. And what do you think Enos means? man. What do you think Seth means? The anointed and the one that's compensated. And what do you think Adam is? Adam is to make red, the red man. 
And then we have the last person, last little line on here. It says, which is the son of God. Man is the son of God. That means you're Jesus. Everyone in here is Jesus. Do you get it? Do you understand what this is? It all winds up with Adam, the first guy, and it is a man. It's not talking about Eve in here. Man, it's talking about your mind. And so whenever you go to look up this this uh, this idea of, of man and Adam, you get this idea of this is where red comes in. This is where ruddy comes in. Uh, this is what this is how this this is this this is how John the Baptist is described as being ruddy. So is uh, well, of course, Adam. And who else along this line? Uh, who was Jacob's brother, right? He was made red and hairy along the same kinds of, of those ideas of red. Red is always rep representing the skin, the side of us. So we are the son of man. We are the son of man. And that's what we get out of this wonderful story. And using, using this this formula here, this, this particular, this particular way of understanding the scriptures and how the letters work out and the numbers work out, you can see how it followed one, two, three. So you can tell which part they were talking about each time they moved down the road there. And one thing that gave it all away is that, you know, it says here that it's the corporal part of a living creature. They're talking about it's the it's the physical side of the human being winds up being the son of God, but in this due course and in its time, remember, like we have to wait six. There's that six. There's that forty days and forty nights of traveling to get from the eastern side or the western side to the eastern side. It takes forty days and forty nights to do that. You know. It, it it does. It takes it takes a good long time. That could take many lifetimes to get from that that way of thinking to the other way of thinking. That's how strong it is, you know. And this story later on talks about how you know the snare, the gospel being a snare, and that the gospel is preached to the poor. Do you understand? Did you catch that? You know that the outside part of the Bible, the uh, the letter, which they say kills, which the Bible tells us kills the person, is what is preached to those people that are poor. The poor, they were ministered the Bible. That's what he did. He gave it to them. He, he didn't give them anything. of the, uh, He didn't tell them the secrets of the Bible or nothing. He told only his people, his own body, only his only his group, his only buds. I'm, he says, I'm, I'm going to help you. But these guys out here, they ain't earned the right to know that yet. So he tells them all parables. So he's telling the Gospels to the poor people, you know, because they don't need to know this part about the kingdom inside of us. They're still working off the kingdom on the outside of us. You know, and until you get that part done, you can't do this, all right? But uh, I'm here to kind of tell you that there is a way, and if you're seeking it and searching it out, which is why you may be coming to this place here, and you should know that, you know, that the fewer the fewer people there are, the more truthful I would think, you know. <laughs> I don't have to sell you guys on anything, you know. I think I do a pretty damn good job at showing you how this stuff works. All right. And so um, uh, to those people that don't get it and don't understand, it's just not your time yet. Okay. And I'm the crazy dude. I'm that crazy dude that's killed your Jesus. You know, I'm that crazy guy who took away your, your rapture. I'm that awful sinner who's rewritten the Bible to make it sound like a new age entrapment. Yeah, I'm the he, that devil, that devil. 
who's ruining everybody's hateful time by showing you that it's really all about love. It's all beautiful. It's just a shame that they that that the, the way the Bible is written is meant to scare people and hate make bring about hate division. It's just my people are literal. Ain't no shit, man. People are literal. That's a shame. But that's what's the way it is, you know. Evidently, we wouldn't have this this world around us if it didn't have all of this dark, dead people in here running the whole damn thing, you know. So um, we're just not we're not going to knock it. We're just going to understand it and know that this there is a way out of hell. This is how you go. This is the way out. This is how it works. All right. Don't wait around for Jesus to come save you. You're supposed to go up there and meet him, save yourself. Hup to. Hup to. All right. I love you guys. I really do. Wait, how do I do this? We just killed this? Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll see you guys.